So Mountain View College is a two-year institution. We are one of seven colleges within the Dallas County Community College District. Uh, we are in the heart of Oak Cliff. Uh, so about 20% of our student body is full-time. So that means that the majority of our students are, are part-time attendees. They, are, um, they have families. Sometimes we have single parents. Uh, we, have a, a, we are a, a minority-serving institution. Um, so very ethnically diverse. We have a very large international student population. Uh, many of our students are working multiple jobs at times. Uh, and, and really, we have a, a variety of ages at Mountain View College as well. You can have people all the way from uh, sometimes uh, even uh, 14, 15 year olds because we have a dual credit program, uh, all the way up to, you know, I've, I've, I've served students in their 60s that have had a lifelong career and that are really going back to school uh, in order to uh, either follow their dreams or perhaps improve their economic outcomes. So very, very diverse uh, student body, uh, all with different needs and different learning styles. So I personally feel, you know, with regard to all of those things I just mentioned, uh, our students, regardless of their age, their ethnicity, or even their socioeconomic status, a visible body is absolutely accessible in, in my experience of using it over this year and a half. Um, I'll also talk a little bit about my pre-COVID experiences with visible body. This is something we've been using for about a year now before all this went down. Um, even when we're back in the classroom, this is something we will continue using because it's been just a wonderful resource for uh, our physical lab space even. Uh, and uh, the other thing is uh, that a lot of our students are from areas of low socioeconomic status. So uh, Oak Cliff is somewhat of a poverty stricken area. And uh, a lot of our students really are looking for affordable courses. They're looking for not just the affordable courses, but affordable curricular resources that are gonna really enrich their learning experiences. Uh, so I myself am a first generation student who um, you know, grew up in an area of low socioeconomic status. Uh, I, I was one of those individuals that acquired copious amounts of student loan debt, much of which came from all these fancy books you see behind me to make me look smart, right? Um, I was just unwilling to sell those back because you pay $325 for it and it's insulting when they tell you they'll give you 30 bucks, right? Um, so I kept them to serve as this. They're all in, in many ways good reference points, but you know, paperweights or perhaps if you want to stand, you can mount your laptop on top of them. You know, we're, we're, we're find ourselves sitting a lot. Uh, but I try to always look for curricular resources that are affordable. Um, and I do that for myself because I remember how it was for me and I do it for my students uh, as well. So I first learned about Visible Body through OpenStax and that is an open educational resource. They're a partner with OpenStax. So what drew me to OpenStax was that it was free, that my students no longer had to pay upwards of $300 for a textbook that contained roughly the same amount of information. It was also very adaptable. Uh, I, have, I feel like with OpenStax and with Visible Body, I have a lot of agency to integrate things in, like scientific peer-reviewed journal articles that just really aren't afforded by some of those cookie cutter publisher materials that you have out there. Uh, so OER, I'm all about that for saving the students money and for uh, really trying to ensure that this scientific knowledge is accessible to everyone. Uh, I love that Visible Body is a small business, right? They're minnows in a pool of sharks. Uh, so I really uh, want to ensure that I'm supporting uh, businesses that are providing, in my personal opinion, uh, a software that is far beyond what any of these cookie cutter publisher materials I've worked with in the past uh, can, can offer. So uh, I just wanted to make that very clear before I go into uh, everything I'm about to talk about. Now, let me go into how this looked a little bit before uh, we had to transition to an online learning environment. With all of these social distancing practices, it has shut down our institution. We can no longer be in the lab space. Uh, but when we were in the laboratory setting, what I had the students do was, for one, everyone has their cell phone and their laptops on hand. The majority of our students uh, really have those materials with them. So I did not in any way get rid of the traditional physical models that we have in class. In fact, those manual technical operations are incredibly important. You need something 
uh, physical to manipulate and to compare to this 3D software. So we didn't sacrifice any of our traditional framework. We utilized Visible Body to further enrich our existing learner platform. Uh, so our students oftentimes were working with their cell phones and the models simultaneously to compare. Sometimes the keys get jumbled around and they can be off. Sometimes it's weird looking at the little numbers that they paint in and matching it with the key and looking for the term. So the students found it a lot easier to just access the particular structural component that they were trying to look for. Uh, and, and it really did just help better clarify what the physical models couldn't do on their own. Another thing about our institution is that we don't have a lot of funding for an excessive amount of models within our classroom. So sometimes there would be one model per four students and sometimes even more students to a single model. Um, we don't have a science center, so students can't come back to our campus to uh, go to the science center and look at the physical models, bone boxes, muscle models, kidneys, hearts. They can't do that. And if one particular group of students wanted to accomplish that, they pretty much had to coordinate with the instructor. And then we'd have to say, well, okay, I need to go coordinate with our lab staff because we need to see what other labs might be using that. And then the lab staff is like, yeah, well, we've got about an hour and a half break between this next class. So sure, this student or this group of students can check out a bone box, but they have to stay right here at this table and we need it back in an hour and a half. They can't go off site. And again, an hour and a half, that's limited time. Sometimes students want to have a little bit more time with it. Um, I wanna just even state, even if we had a number of models, even if we had a science center with all of these models available, as I stated, about 80% of our students are not full-time, they are part-time. They have children that they have to pick up from school. They are you know, still watching their children during the day. They have jobs, sometimes multiple jobs. So it's hard for them to get back to campus to go to a science center and look at the model to continue studying. So I just wanna make all of that clear before I show you the, the amazing capabilities of this software and how a lot of my students that I've kind of surveyed over the past year and a half, how they truly feel that it has benefited them to be able to access a heart model, uh, to be able to access a kidney model, anything that you can think of, any of the systems covered in ANP1 and ANP2 is, is offered by this. And not just the three-dimensional models that are absolutely detailed and wonderful, but a lot of physiological animations. There are um, histology components to it that just make it absolutely wonderful. Uh, so the students really appreciate a lot of these things about this software. Uh, so um, I've had a lot of students tell me, oh, well, I was picking up my kid, waiting in line for, for you know, sometimes, I don't know if y'all have ever had to pick up a kid from school. You could be in those lines for 30 minutes, depending on the size of your town, if you're more in the city. I've had students say, oh, I was waiting for a dentist appointment and I was just on my phone in the lobby, just studying these models. You know, there's, there's so many different ways where you have all of this knowledge in the palm of your hand. It's not lugging around a, you know, thick textbook. Uh, and you could even access that later. If you go to the library on campus, you can access it from the school computers. Uh, so just, it's very, very, um, just very dynamic in terms of accessibility and what it has to offer to better enrich these students' learning experiences. So uh, that's just a little spiel about our institution, about the students that we serve. And I would like to imagine that many of you have a lot of students that are in these very same situations, uh, especially if you're at the two-year college level. Uh, so just wanted to shed some light on, on that before I move uh, any further within this. So now I'm gonna go on ahead and share my screen. And um, I'd like to really just show y'all uh, let me move this out of the way. I want to show y'all, uh, for one, just, just go through, there's this anatomy and physiology app, that's one of the apps, but then there's an additional human anatomy atlas. Uh, everyone can see my screen, correct? I just want to verify that. Excellent. Yes. And then, of course, there's the muscle premium. This focuses mostly on the musculoskeletal system. Uh, we all know that, for, at, at least for my students, the skeletal system and the muscular system within a and 2 that, that middle section of the course always is, is very challenging. The first unit is stuff that they've really seen from introductory biology. Um, the nervous system, while it is uh, pretty complex in terms of identification of cranial nerves, you know, neurons, different parts of the brain, 
uh, the, the skeletal system and the muscular system really does uh, pose very difficult, you know, it, it's just difficult for our students to understand this. Uh, and with visible body, uh, I feel that it has even helped me better conceptualize some of these things that I, I previously did not get looking at uh, traditional curricular materials like, like two-dimensional illustrative representations from books. Uh, so in addition to that, there are a number of physiology animations. And I'll show you all a, a couple of examples, uh, which some of which of these animations are embedded within the Anatomy and Physiology app but you are uh, really able to, uh, one, just let the video play through. It has closed captionings, it has a transcript, um, but what I actually like to do is uh, mute it, and then I like to narrate over it, and then I like to pause at certain areas and maybe highlight specific components of the video to uh, probe their thinking even further, uh, kind of in a little bit more detail, because the intention of these videos that they are oftentimes 30 seconds to a minute, very short snippets that really get the point across. It's absolutely wonderful. So I will give some examples like that uh, here in a moment. Uh, but let me go on ahead and just show y'all the, um, the A and P app. So right now I'm looking in this and I will eventually open the Atlas. Uh, but let's go on ahead real quick, just start with the integumentary system, for instance. I could click this model and of course it has everything that you would need, uh, that you would see in a physical model that is in front of a, a workbench within a laboratory setting. The great thing is that you can zoom in, you can zoom out, right? You can rotate. Uh, and, and of course, one of the great features of this is you can even click over here on the side. Well, let's highlight the components of the epidermis. Let's highlight components of the dermis. What about the hypodermis? And as we even click on some of these things, for instance, uh, right here, if I were to click that, we notice that it is the erector pili. So it will even tell you what these specific structures are. So you click it, and sometimes students are like, sebaceous gland, they don't really know how to pronounce it, but now it's like, let me click that. Sebaceous gland sebaceous or gland. oil gland. So they gain those insights. Another wonderful feature, uh, as opposed to just clicking the structures and having the uh, specific terms come up for them, is that if I were to click, the sebaceous gland, or even click the sebum. It will even tell you that specific oil that is produced by these glands. You can not only click the pronunciation, but you can also click this textbook right here, and it provides further insights uh, related to um, that particular uh, substance that is produced by this sebaceous gland. So the students can even get a little bit more of that information that perhaps would appear in a lecture examination uh, not just so much an indicator line saying, well, what is this structure? So wonderful features in that regard. The tools that are accessible, if you wanted to draw and highlight a particular structure, uh, you could do that. If you have a tablet with the pencil, you can even uh, better write it out. It's a little hard for me to do that with my, uh, you know, mouse, um, but still, it, it's wonderful. You could also take notes of this. Uh, if you just want to just uh, write anything down, that you wanted to. It, it's just, you know, anything that you want within this. If you want to highlight a particular note on uh, something that you uh, created an indicator line for and you link it to that note, you could do that. Now, what, what's that? Actually, you can use that little yellow nubbin at the bottom. That's a, that takes you, if you click on that and drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're absolutely right. Um, so that's another great feature of it as well, that you can absolutely just do this and create even more notes over and over and over and just highlight that as well. Um, so just great, again, for the students to be able to do that. And, and one other great thing, and thank you for that, Mary, um, you can also download this image. So if I were to click that, whatever I did, I can screenshot that and it actually opens uh, exactly what you placed. So the students can then uh, take this and print it out and start creating their own manual if they want, or their own study sheets if, if perhaps they wanted to do that as well. Uh, so, so those are some great features, you know, with regard to some of the tools that they have accessible. Uh, and I've got to say too, um, I'm still always learning something new about visible body. And in terms of support, I just want to make it very clear that if you have any question, if a student has a particular question, troubleshooting something, all you have to do is email Mary and she is promptly responding to you and 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 you have 
an immediate access. She will call you on your phone. She will set up a web meeting. Um, in fact, when we first were thinking of adopting this software, Mary actually flew out to us in Texas uh, and, and really demonstrated this software in the classroom. And, and even after we were sold on it, she said, you know, me visiting and showing you the demonstration is certainly not good enough. So let's set up some training sessions with you and your staff. When some of my staff were unable to make it to the collective session, she even reached out to them individually just to say, hey, if you want to set up an individual session on how to utilize this software, uh, I'd be more than happy uh, to help you, to help walk you through it. Because you can, of course, in this section, if I go to uh, my particular course sections, there are quiz banks. So yes, you can assign quizzes with this. Um, you can assign tests with this. There's a lot of things that you can do within the instructor resource section uh, that are highly beneficial. But if the instructor resources uh, aren't enough for you, you obviously can contact Mary and she is always more than happy to help uh, with, with working and, and understanding this, uh, you know, so you can function more efficiently within your uh, educational setting. So that's for the integumentary system, like I said, to give you all that example. Um, let's say we went to some histology you can click on the epidermis histology and it'll pull that up. Uh, you can even hide the labels. So if you are doing what I'm doing right now, like a screen share, you can ask students, well, what is this particular area right here? Under the assumption that they're not showing their labels, uh, you can just say what's here, from here to here, from here to here. And they really, um, you, you can really engage with the students as you're instructing them during a normal class day. So as we transitioned into an online environment what i wanted to do was still try to provide them with as something as similar as we were already getting so i still host my uh like sessions at from 8 a.m to to 11 o'clock a.m uh, monday wednesdays with my students and i go through this visible body software i pull up this image so i'm not having to direct myself to uh, internet tabs to search things up on google and thumb through the number of images everything you need is really right here within this platform from high quality videos to uh, images of, of histological preparations uh, all the way to the 3d models that we work with uh, and very detailed information re regarding all of these uh, structures as it relates to both the anatomy and the physiology so it's a, a nice little one-stop shop uh, the other thing aside from histology you have some more traditional you know um, illustrative representations that you'd see in your traditional curricular resources to describe what these particular cells are. Uh, but, but really what is most enjoyable to me is uh, the, the 3D models that students have access to. So very quickly, I wanna go to the skeletal system and I wanna show y'all, you know, let's say we're talking about axial and appendicular skeletons. You can click axial skeleton and once again, it highlights that particular uh, component. You can rotate this model. You can get an anterior, a posterior, a lateral view. So many different features. You can uh, differentiate between axial and appendicular skeleton. Uh, but even if we were to uh, remove that, you can still ask the students as you're in this session, well, what bone is this right here? And you know, they can type in their questions and they're like, oh, perhaps that is a femur. And it's like, eh. Actually, that is a humerus. And if they don't know how to pronounce that, humerus. Again, you can have that pronunciation for them. You might ask them, well, what collectively is this structure here? Well, it's the sternum, but what particular part is this right here, right? They can answer you and then you can click and give a confirmation. Now that is just in the um, virtual setting. You can, however, still assign quizzes that they can access outside of this type of learning environment uh, where, where they can identify these particular structures where it says, you know, identify the xiphoid process. Um, you can also make it to where you kind of try to get them to think about those directional terms. Well, identify the left humerus versus the right humerus. Uh, so uh, even those directional terms are definitely a feature on here. So any bone you click, you see clavicle, right, the nubrium. Uh, humerus, you've got your ulna, your radius. There's, there's so many different great features about this. Uh, you can even click in and, sh and demonstrate how these bones articulate with one another in terms of your clavicle, your scapula, and your humerus from, from both ends. This is something that I feel is, is oftentimes not um, very clear with 
with the traditional curricular materials. Uh, so students oftentimes see these things and they're like, oh, like, okay, now I get it and, and cool. <laughs> and you can even click all of the individual ligaments that exist on here and it will tell you specifically uh, what those are. You can even further, if you wanted to, when we talk about like your glenohumeral joint, you can, you can ask them, well, what particular joint is this? What, what classification of synovial joint is this as you're teaching? So I very much probe their thinking and assess their knowledge uh, while, while showing them this. So I introduce this content to them. And as we continue overviewing it, uh, I make sure that I, I am constantly like refreshing their memory and, and really scaffolding uh, that knowledge. So um, that's kind of just for when we're introducing them to the skeletal system as a whole. But we know that for the mandible that there are several components that you don't necessarily see right in here. Uh, but let's say that I were to go to the menu, I actually can get more detailed descriptions regarding the landmarks of these individual structures. So I can click the mandible landmarks and you can see that it shows you the various structural components. And again, you can freely rotate this. Uh, and when you rotate this, you know, you can differentiate between your um, right and left sides. You can differentiate between anterior versus lateral versus posterior. And what I love about this is that it's color coded. The landmarks show you uh, specifically what structural components these are. When we think of the coronoid process, when we think of the condyl, you know, these are all uh, going to be easy for the students to highlight because uh, sometimes, personally, I've looked at a variety of anatomy and physiology manuals and it seems like they all kind of take their own agency as to what is what. You'll sometimes see that their indicator lines are slightly different or slightly off. Or even if students perhaps do try to access outside materials, there's always these like different perceptions as to what landmark is what. So it's hard for students to really differentiate between what is and what isn't. And sometimes that can lead students astray. So I personally feel that the fact that this is color coded the way that it is, and once you click, these individual structures, you see that it highlights it in blue, but it tells you specifically up here, and again, that same body of the mandible. Uh, or if you click here, it tells you specifically what these are, and you once again can click the text information, and it even would uh, potentially tell you linkage to like the trigeminal nerve for the uh, nervous system, which they'll eventually get to. So this intends on allowing the students to scaffold their knowledge. Oftentimes, curricular materials that I've seen try to teach these things in isolation. It's like you're learning this unit, then we move on to this unit, or it's you memorize this chapter, then the next chapter, and it's like, no, you are in fact trying to scaffold your knowledge and, and construct a, a beautiful house, and if your foundation is bad, the house crumbles. So visible body really does allow you and your students to better scaffold your knowledge, and, and you might even learn something new, or you might even clear some misconceptions that we may have previously had regarding this information. So it's, it's very wonderful, and not just for the mandible, y'all, but uh, any of these particular areas that you look at, you're gonna be able to um, identify all of the different structural components of these, click it, and it tells you exactly what it is. Uh, so, you know, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, uh, all of these are going to be accessible. So uh, each of the individual bones you've seen highlighted, they do have them individually isolated with all of the specific landmarks color coded. And uh, personally, I feel like um, I, I had one student who had taken AMP1 with me about two semesters ago um, before we really integrated this. Um, she didn't do too hot. She decided to come back and take it with me again when she was in the proper mindset, she was working less, and she of course had the visible body and she just said, you know, I wish this was something that we had then because I can actually more efficiently study these different landmarks that I only had access to when we were in the lab. And even when we were in the lab, me and my four lab members were fighting over the scapula. <laughs> so now it's like I have this on my phone, I have this on my tablet, and I know exactly 
what these structures are. And the main reason that I am, am, am still a little bummed regarding the absence of the physical space that we have, because on our laboratory practical assessments, when they go to each individual station, it is a physical scapula with the you know numbers that they have to kind of fill in what particular landmark that is. Uh, but this really did help students to, to say, you know, I need you to look at that scapula bone on your own. And I need you to also compare that to the scapula you see here to really um, clarify and, and put it into to better perspective than what you can get with just the model alone. And the fact that you can rotate this along with the bone itself is also very beneficial. A lot of times all students have is, you know, a, an anterior and a posterior view of the scapula. Um, and it, it's very difficult for them sometimes if you don't have that level of abstract thinking. A lot of students can look at a two-dimensional illustrative representation and do these like rotational skills in their mind. But there Stacey, are, yeah, sorry. sorry let me, no, and let me just interject. We're, we've got <laughs> some, sorry, there's my dog. We're getting some questions piled Ah, up. okay, I'm sorry, I didn't notice. No, I guess good. I don't have my. Enthusiasm, and thank you so much for the good plug for me since Emily's my boss. <laughs> so, <laughs> Um, that's great. We definitely want to be as responsive as possible. So um, let's turn um, our questions now and open this up for questions um, because I think people have specific questions about how you utilize it and you and I can kind of bounce back and forth on answering these questions. So Emily, do you want to get the first question? Sure. So I've got uh, a few questions from June. So June, I'm going to unmute you now. Hang on one second. Okay, June, um, I think, hold on one second. I think you just have to unmute yourself on your end and yep. you can answer your question. There you go. Yep. Hi. So my basic question is I have, uh, I teach in a doctoral OT, PT, and PA program, well, the PA program is master's level and the, the athletic training program is master's level. So we usually have uh, six cadavers and this summer we will have uh, prob probably one, and uh, in the fall, we, we don't know what's going to happen. So um, my question, uh, I have a series of questions here. First of all, uh, it's Stacy, is that right, who's been presenting? Yes. Yeah, yeah. so Stacy, have you ever done di uh, cadaver dissection with the current students that you have, and if so, how has visible body replaced it? Uh, and then the second question is, uh, there is what visible body uses the term dissection, uh, which is basically a delayering. It's not uh, necessarily dissection, but it's where you can hide or fade or hide structure so that you can go deeper, which is great. I love visible body. I'm just trying to figure out how to use it as a potential uh, secondary alternative or alternative to cadaver dissection? Yeah, so um, again, we are, um, it's more of a, a two-year community college. So the uh, introductory anatomy and physiology, uh, and of course, you know, one and two, um, we don't really go, um, you know, far beyond the scope of just the introductory uh, platform. Uh, so we do. So I'm wanting to know with your experience with the program is how flexible is the program to extend to the upper level? And I would say um, so Harvard Medical School is is one institution that utilizes this. So I would say, um, yes, it is very, very dynamic. I think that you could utilize this uh, at the uppermost level at a doctoral level program or you can like how we've utilized it more at the two year introductory uh, anatomy and physiology level. And, and a lot of my colleagues initially were a little bit scared and skeptical because they thought, man, this is a really, really complex. Like this is, this seems like you can go really, really deep with this. And I said, sure, but you can also go pretty superficial with it. Yeah, I use it all the time with my student, with my patients in the clinic. So I'm, I'm very familiar with the program um, and love it. I just am wanting to integrate it in higher level teaching. Hey, Stacy, yeah. will you stop sharing your screen and I'll share my screen for a second and yeah, show you absolutely. a couple of things. This is perfect. So as Stacy pointed out, we do have um, a number of 
uh, higher level institutions that are utilizing our content. So with Human Anatomy Atlas, we have the cadaver, the gross anatomy lab function here that is set up so that you have um, a, a cadaver lab that is in place that you, again, as um, you have the ability to, to customize this view and to um, work within it. The information that we've heard is that in a live, when you have a live cadaver view, this is very beneficial because what it does is it allows students to really prep and get hands-on and have that understanding and be able to work from superficial to deep. Um, we provide, you know, the ability to customize the view that you want here. So I'm using a two-step dissection where I select a structure and then move it. I can work systemically so I can take away entire um, muscular so that I can focus on different components. So you can set this cadaver view up. Um, in a way that makes sense for you. You also have the ability to um, move the cadaver from prone to supine, which um, from our reports from our biomedical visualization experts who, who, who build this content, that's, that's a big challenge in the real cadaver lab. Um, and so we're seeing this, this replacement. Um, UT Southwestern um, is looking at also adopting it and um, we can also see about potentially connecting you, June, with maybe some um, other faculty that are doing like the cadaver dissections and how that works. Um, also, uh, Colorado, is it Colorado State University? I've got somebody there that utilized this because he couldn't get a cadaver one semester. And so he might be somebody that I could connect you with. Great, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Great, thank you. And Emily, the next question. So I've got, um, oh, let's see. So Julia, I think you've got your question answered. Um, let's see. Adam, I know I've answered some of Adam's questions on the Q and A, but I'm going to unmute you, Adam, and see if you if I got to you. <laughs> to got to all your questions. So, Adam, can I think you just have to unmute yourself on your end, and then you can talk. Okay. We can hear you. <laughs> um, I forgot my camera at home today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was jockeying everything back and forth. So, um. I had a couple of questions for Stacy. Um, the first one was he was um, doing a little annotation and it looks like that would be good, maybe live if I was projecting that to the front of the lab. But what about, um, do you ever do that using like, uh, is there a way to do that in an electronic classroom like Blackboard Ultra or I, I don't know what you use. Yeah, so currently uh, we're using Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, and pretty much what I've done is something much similar uh, to what I did just previously, where I did my screen share here in Zoom and, and was able to highlight certain things. Uh, so with Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, they also have a screen share feature. So in the uh, physical laboratory space, I was projecting, you know, because our I just would log in in our workbench computers and project it on the screen to you know, obviously give some demonstrations and, and provide some guidance to the students. Uh, but in this particular setting, uh, I've really found it uh, useful to, to provide the screen share to where the students can see uh, exactly what I'm doing and operating with Visible Body. And they can either follow along uh, on their computers or um, they can uh, perhaps access it later. And, and the great thing about Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, and I'm sure you could do that in Zoom as well, is you can record those sessions to where even following class, uh, the students who perhaps maybe weren't able to make it could still access that video and, and see everything that you were uh, presenting on your screen share. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. Um, the other thing you said you would do on occasion is um, maybe point to or highlight one of the ligaments in the shoulder, and then you'd ask a student um, to name it or to maybe comment on its function. Mm -hmm. What's to stop the student from clicking on his own uh, running version of, of uh, Visible Body to answer you. Do you, you exactly. follow? Um, I, I absolutely. Uh, so um, for me, when I'm doing that during the lecture component, uh, I try to just, like I kind of am under the assumption that students are probably gonna be utilizing that as a reference. So what I try to tell students is, you know, um, by you simply, clicking it to get the answer, you're, you're really selling yourself short. Um, so you wanna just really try to uh, answer it based on 
what knowledge you've acquired so far. Um, but to me, if, if they do that and it's ultimately going to help them, you know, for once they get to the assessment, um, I, I, you know, would, would not really take issue with that. Now, um, the good thing for us is that, you know, we have lockdown browsers and things like that for our institution. Uh, so students aren't necessarily able to, once taking a practical online, it's not like they can freely open up visible body and try to, you know, like unfairly go through and um, like identify the structures. And we also have transitioned to um, like no backtracking, fill in the blank, um, kind of little, a lot of things to try to prevent that academic dishonesty. So yeah, I more so try to do that to, to probe their thinking a little bit, um, much like I would do in the physical classroom to say, well, what's this? And if they were to kind of reference their notes and they say it, um, it it's to me kind of not, it, it's, it's okay in that sense. But once they were on the actual assessment, I would most definitely take issue with them, uh, you know, trying to practice that academic dishonesty. Hey, um, but I right. have a question about this screen here. So are these four apps, is the information in them completely separate or is some of it redundant? I find it is a, is a new faculty member to Visible Body a little bit difficult, for example, to when I'm using human anatomy and atlas to go from uh, systems view to microscopic view. You know what I mean? Yeah, so um, I guess I, what I can go on ahead and do right now is um, I will- stop. I'll stop sharing and you can share, Stacy. Okay, yeah. So um, I would say that there's not um, redundancies within them. I think that each of the individual apps have uh, their own unique set of resources to offer. So once we get into the uh, microanatomy, so for instance, at present, uh, we are in the um, special senses right now. So a lot of things that we're looking at are like the ears and the eyes, right? So the good thing about the human anatomy atlas that we have here is, uh, and that's gonna be this app here, you click the human anatomy atlas, you go to microanatomy, and you can access the, the ear model. So this is something that isn't in the muscle premium, uh, nor is it in the, um, you know, visible body, uh, the anatomy, uh, human A and P, the Atlas really is the one that offers this particular uh, ear model. Uh, so again, you click on these models and it shows you specifically uh, what that is. You can do the same thing in terms of gaining insight. And then of course, I like the pathology section uh, regarding this as well. So if you wanna place it in the context of healthcare, uh, you can absolutely do that as well. Uh, and uh, it even provides some like linkage as to where this information was derived. So there's that, and then of course, uh, you can go back, you can go to the eye, uh, and of course you can see the various structures of the eye, and you can again click and identify. You can um, fade or completely eliminate certain things uh, as you move deeper into the structure. Uh, and then let's say for uh, human anatomy and physiology too, within the uh, anatomy and physiology app, they have the kidneys within the urinary system but it's within the microanatomy that you really can uh, dig a little bit deeper in terms of uh, you know, circulation throughout the kidney. You can look even at all of the individual components of uh, the nephron, and it will tell you what those specific structures are. So the microanatomy is very unique to uh, the atlas, especially with the uh, alveolar sacs. You can identify uh, everything from the uh, bronchiolar smooth muscle to the terminal bronchioles. Uh, and even if we wanted to look at an individual section of that, you can go back to the alveolus and identify, um, you know, your surfactants, you can identify your uh, type 2 alveolar cells, your alveolar macrophages. Um, and, and really, too, what I enjoy about it is the capability of, of really showing uh, the, the movement of these red blood cells and, and, and really highlighting. Sometimes I don't think students get what we mean by you know, that simple squamous epithelial tissue, like lining this structure and how it's much easier for gases to diffuse between these spaces. So I use the human anatomy atlas when we are diving really deep uh, into, um, you know, these structures. Uh, so that's another good thing that I would, I would say the atlas provides. Another thing that I want to just highlight is the cross sections. The cross sections are so great 
sometimes students don't fully recognize or when they see a cross section, it's hard for them to really visualize where that comes from. So when you click this, it will actually show you the structure, provide the cross section and then even do the rotation uh, to where once you, and, and, and again, click and it tells you everything uh, within these particular structures. Uh, so that's what I'd say about the um, Atlas versus uh, the Human Anatomy and Physiology app. Um, like for instance, uh, in the muscular system here, uh, you mainly are looking to identify the certain muscles. You can hide this out to even show deeper muscles to compare a you know superficial versus a deeper muscle. Uh, very good at that. But if I were to uh, open the muscle premium, the muscle premium actually affords something slightly different because it not only just shows you uh, the particular muscles and what you can identify from that, um, but it also uh, can show you um, a lot of the movements that are involved within this process. Uh, and so bear with me, my, uh, I'm running a lot of stuff right now, so my computer's taking a little bit of time. Uh, I, I hadn't uh, previously opened it. So um, it, for me, at least, it's never been a problem to have all three of them open at the same time. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, you can um, clear the cage, the cookies, all of those things to allow uh, more, but let's say, uh, like I, I had mentioned, that it's about scaffolding the uh, knowledge and information as opposed to seeing things in isolation. So let's say that we are looking at uh, shoulder abduction, right? Movement away from that midline. What I love about this is it does the actual movement, but it isolates the specific muscles that are allowing that shoulder abduction to occur. Now, if I were to go back, and look at the um, adduction, right? Movement toward that midline. It does the movement back toward it. And again, isolates those specific muscles that are involved in that process. Now, this was something that I found very difficult to convey to students with the um, traditional curricular materials or even the, the muscle models that we had. Like sure, you can tell them these are the muscles involved in adduction versus abduction, but to really see it and put it into perspective. And as, as I had mentioned, scaffolding, this is showing you an example of something covered, you know, it's like your musculoskeletal system. You have the muscles within this process. You have the individual bones within this process. Uh, and then of course, these movements are discussed within the joints chapter. So all in one little section, you can overlap between previously discussed chapters. Uh, so that's one thing I really appreciate about uh, the, the muscle premium is that it shows all of the uh, various types of movements uh, that you could possibly think of. Sometimes for students just seeing it, you know, this toward this in, a, in an image, they don't always get that point across. Uh, so that's kind of what I would say that they all do definitely provide very unique, um, unique you, there's unique differences between each of the apps. One other thing too is that you also have the ability um, to create favorites and to create tours within Human Anatomy Atlas. Again, Stacy, how about if I share my screen? Absolutely, yeah. Let me stop. Um, so let me go ahead and share my screen. So within Human Anatomy Atlas, you have the ability to be able to um, go in and you can then save favorites and create and thread your favorites together to create a tour so that you can go to the views that you want and pre-plan them so that as you lecture, you then have the ability to be able to um, have everything preset so you're not having to jump around and find the view that you want. You can dissect away views that and, and add structures and personalize the views that you want to have um, shown. Currently, the way that it's set up is that you can then show that to your students, um, but it will be available um, that you will be able to then um, in the fall be able to actually create a tour and share it with your students so that they will then have the same view that you have. So um, for Human Anatomy Atlas, um, while I'm on Zoom, I a lot of times have a problem with this loading. The first time you click in and log in to create a favorite or a tour, you have to create an account. And then after that, you can thread those together. So that's like another option as well. Um, so um, hopefully that kind of answers those questions.
um, Emily? Next yeah. All right. So we've got a question from um, Duck. So I've unmuted you. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. I, I'm late. I'm sorry. I just have a Zoom session with my students. And uh, the one other thing I wanted to ask is, can I use Zoom courseware as a replacement for lab exam? Like, you know, in the labs, as uh, Stacy has mentioned just now, that, you know, you have models, you have uh, bones, and you label them, and students could identify them. And if I want to create a number of questions from different topics and put them together, uh, can that be done in on Visible Body Courseware? Uh, yes, you can. I'll go ahead and take this one. So here you can see that I'm in my quiz bank. So mm -hmm. you can utilize our existing content or you can also create your own content. So if I create a new quiz, um, uh -huh. let's say that I want to use existing content, I can then say that I want to do a dissection quiz. I can start with um, the nervous system and then I can... Um, pick the, this, the quiz that I want to use. And so here I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say that I'm going to use all of these different questions. And I can actually go through and I can then add in the endocrine system questions as well so that then I can add here and here's my endocrine system questions. And so that allows me to then set it up so that I can do endocrine and nervous and have the information all together. So here you can see. So you absolutely can combine systems and different questions. Um, you can do that where I could go in and I could actually clone a quiz and then add more questions to it. So here is an example of a brain and cranial nerves dissection that I've cloned and I can edit that. And then I can come in here Sorry, I'm moving around my Zoom windows. Oh, they keep hiding the spot that I need. So I can then add more questions. And so then I can just sort to find those additional questions and add those. So you absolutely can provide, you know, a, a number of different topics within one quiz. The other thing is, is that as you configure your quiz within building the quiz ability, you have the ability to randomize and pool questions. So you could have a you know, question bank of 100 questions and students answer 50. So you can absolutely do that utilizing our ready-made content or building out your own. Does that answer that question? Yes, thank you. And, and I could set my own questions as well, or is it from a pre-selected data bank? No, you absolutely can create your own question. So if I go to the question bank, we have 3,500 questions. So I can start mm -hmm. from scratch. Okay. And I also have the ability to clone a question and then edit it. So here you can see I've cloned this question. So I can go in and then edit that answer. So I can make it as general or as specific. So instead of it being the right or left extensor digit I, digit I minimize, it becomes only this question. If I want to make it more general, and make it into something specific from the just the right arm, any muscle from the right arm, then those become the right answer. So you have the ability to clone the questions and then change them, or you can start completely from scratch and create your own content. If you do multiple choice or short answer, you have the ability to actually upload your own image as well. Right, okay, good. And it can it be integrated into Canvas? We use Canvas as our online platform. Um, so currently we have a light integration with Canvas. Um, so when students, um, you create your course and then the way that students get enrolled into your course is you send them a link in the, using mm -hmm. the invite people tab. That puts them into your grade book. Mm -hmm. And the grade book is set up so that here you can see in the upper right hand corner, I have a CSV file that I can export and then import into Canvas. We currently um, are working and we're close to being finished with a deep LTI integration with learning management systems. Um, that's probably not going to be ready until after the first of the year. But once that's ready, everything will be able to be housed in those learning management systems. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Emily, next question. Sure. It comes from uh, David Lott. You are unmuted. And, um, so go ahead and ask your question, please. Thank you. I had a couple and they're all sort of regarding quizzes since we're on the quiz vein. Um, I, I noticed that some of the pre-made quizzes uh, are 
labeled as practice quizzes and others are grade quizzes. Are you able to, to uh, switch between one versus the other? So if you make a new quiz, which I've tried to do uh, new to the visible body itself, um, it's not allowing me to uh, create it as a practice quiz. It assumes that it's going to be a graded quiz and I can't seem to um, find a, a way to um, switch to a practice quiz. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Stacy, is okay if I answer this one? Yeah, absolutely. Great. So when you create an, a new assignment and you create a quiz, the practice quizzes are actually coming from the apps themselves. So if you click into anatomy and physiology, you can see here that we have practice quizzes that are built. So mm -hmm. these are non-editable. So this is what you see when you go into our preset courses and see the practice quizzes is it's linking out to the quizzes that are in the app. If you wanted to create a practice quiz with your own content, um, we don't have the ability to set um, a, um, a total practice quiz, but what you can do is that you have the ability. So here I'm creating an assignment and I'm selecting the quiz that I wanna use. And so here, let's just do a dissection quiz. And so here, this is the quiz that I wanna use. When I create that assignment, I then have the ability where I can add those point values. So you can make it just like a one point um, value so that it's a completion grade. And so that's the way to do it. And then you can set it with unlimited attempts. And so that's the way that you can kind of build your own practice quizzes is by utilizing a really low point value and then um, doing unlimited attempts okay. but the practice quizzes when you see the practice quizzes in our pre-built course that's taking us to the content that's already built in the apps themselves okay and then related to that if i could ask another quiz sure. uh, question i've tried to create uh, my own quizzes again and i have uploaded several multiple choice questions that are already pre-made mm -hmm. and i can't seem to uh, find the ability to, in that same quiz with multiple choice questions, also be able to incorporate dissection questions? That's a great question. So at this point, the way that it's set up is that when you are setting up quiz assignments, you um, have separate quizzes. So you have separate dissection and separate multiple choice. So you can't combine the types of questions okay. in one type of quiz. You can combine topics but you can't have dissection and multiple choice in one quiz. In the, in the same quiz itself. Yep. But okay. it's coming. It's coming very soon. So coming. much is coming very soon. I think probably by fall, it'll, it'll be, that capability will be here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that sounds awesome. Great. All right. And, uh, Any? So, some of my, my other question that I had posted, I think was uh, somewhat addressed how you could, uh, incorporate the grades so they take the quizzes on visible body but then the grades are linked to your learning management system so I'll I'll play with that and if I have questions I can join one of the one of the future office hours yeah you absolutely can join a future office hour but also please remember that you are also all well able to reach out to your individual rep Stacy, thank you so much for saying I'm so responsive, but I think that I'm in good company with all of our team that we're absolutely want to make sure that we um, can answer any questions for you. We also have a dedicated trainer, Laura Sandhusen. Some of you maybe have worked with her um, or listened to her webinars. That's another resource that we will set you up with where you can have a personal um, training session with Laura Sandhusen as well. So lots of different resources. And then within our programs, when you click on the question marks, um, here I'm in courseware, clicking on the question mark here. When I click on that, it takes me to a specific help page for that app, for that product. So here I'm in courseware. And then we have articles, support articles that are all set up here so that you can also look there as well. So lots of resources at your fingertips. Thank you for all the assistance and the time. You're yeah, welcome. I, I am putting my email address in the chat. So anybody, please feel free to email me and I will get you connected with your visible body representative. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, so Paul is next, Paul Hodgkin. Go ahead. Paul? Looks like, you're still, looks like you're still muted, Paul. Nope. 
All right, I will come back to you, Paul. Um, I'm going to go to Julie Chang. Hang on one second, Julie. Yeah. Oh, Paul, are you there? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Julie. Julie, go ahead. Thank you so much for all your. I was just I'm um, asking about the courseware um, package that you had recommended to June earlier. I was wondering if that is inclusive of all the elements that we would find from the four different apps. Yes, it is. So with Visible Body Courseware, students get access, students and instructors get access to all four of our apps. Um, the typical package is $50, $49.99, and that gives students access to all four of our apps plus the course materials for two full years. And then in addition to that, they also receive permanent mobile downloads. So Stacy was talking about how the students really like having that access on their phone. So all of this is included for the $49.99. And then in addition, it's kind of like a Ronco commercial, like, and that's not all. <laughs> You're, we're going to be adding a fifth app for fall of 2020, um, which is Pathology and Physiology, which has um, a number of really amazing resources, including a physiology lessons that includes an interactive beating heart. And so that fifth app will be included um, for fall. So, yep, everything is included in that purchase. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, uh, Joe Muldoon has a question. Go ahead. Hello, um, am I on? Yes, hi. Awesome, thank you. I just had a couple of quick questions. One I had to do with uh, accommodations. I, I love, it's like any text. The colors are brilliant. But if we have somebody that's dealing with accommodations for colorblindness, um, grayscale, um, how do the apps, uh, or have you heard any feedback from anybody on how the apps work for uh, disabilities, individuals with disabilities or accommodations? So we are the 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 content that we offer is as available is like as accessible as possible. We don't necessarily have like a, a different view that you can click in and do like a grayscale or like take out the red and blues. Um, right. ADA accommodations have been something that we've heard a lot about, and it's on a list for future development. Um, part of it is is understanding kind of what the scope of the project is going to be and like what the need is in the marketplace. Um, and so we have it on a list for future development. Um, I don't think we have any specific dates yet. Um, within anatomy and physiology, when I click on the gear icon right here, this is how I turn on that closed captioning um, for the, the animations that, that Stacy showed that he also then turns off that um, at closed captioning and um, the, the voiceover and uses it as a lecture tool. Um, so, so currently um, that's kind of what we have available. We don't like have any flashing lights and, you know, we've got some basic right. stuff, but we don't have that alt text or the, the grayscale or the colorblind. Um, we always, and that's one thing too, is that as you're talking to your rep, we're always reporting back information into our um, project and our product team so that they can put it on a list and kind of assess as we decide to move forward what, what our next updates are gonna be. So make sure, yeah. we'll take that down, but make sure that you um, communicate that to your rep as well. Thank you, You're, the functionality is incredible. I'm not uh, in any way, um, diminishing that it's incredible to me what what you're doing i i've also appreciated that it's the, the your ability to correlate it with text because some students will still or some courses will still be using textbooks yeah. so i love that you have uh, been able to uh correlate it to tortora or to more or to any of the uh, the uh, uh, big anatomy texts that are out there i think that that's incredible um, yeah, I had a hundred books that we've got correlations to. So if you don't That's, see it on your, if you don't see it when you look on our website, check with your rep because they can usually provide it for you or request it. That's amazing. And I have one more question in terms of, um, and I'm not familiar with the uh, with the test banks and and uh, application, but um, uh, we use uh, ExamSoft. I'm wondering about being able to use it for uh, hotspot types type of questions, or if you have that kind of functionality. Uh, for your even your formative quizzes um, to do um, uh, hotspot testing where the student will actually identify a structure given a picture. Um, um, so we don't have we don't have 
currently any integration with exam view. We kind of have the opposite with our dissection questions where students are, are posed and they're supposed to go through and dissect and select a specific um, a specific top a specific structure and then that gets automatically um, you could conceivably um, set up a multiple choice question where you had a picture with an image that was highlighted with the structure you wanted students to identify and say is it this this or this that right. would be the other way to do that um, Emily anything else to add to that did we lose Emily Oh, you got to unmute. Oh, there you <laughs> and go. I thought, you know, Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I just have, I will check with a customer. I, I have one um, doing that right now. So I'll, I'll check with them because they, I believe they use ExamSoft. So I'll get back to you. That was um, sure. Joe, right? Joe? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Yep. Thank you very much. I appreciate all of your time and expertise here. This is wonderful. Oh, well, thank you so much for all the, all the great questions and the conversation. Um, it is four minutes past. Um, are there any final questions or thoughts? No? Okay, well, I put my email address in the chat. It's just emily.genoway at visiblebody.com. So you can feel free to email me. I'll put you in touch with your Visible Body rep. So the conversation definitely does not need to stop here. Um, so oh, you know. we just had a, a couple questions that got added. Oh, okay. Um, Sorry. Go ahead. This will be recorded on our webinar page and so we'll post it. And Stacy really can't tell you how much we appreciate your enthusiasm and your partnership. We're doing another webinar on Friday because one is not enough. So um, we'll be back again. So um, go ahead. Um, so let's see, what were the other questions? Oh, utilizing the textbook correlation. Um, so the textbook correlation is set up in such a way so that what we've done is we built these courses that all of our content um, for these different topics is set up so that you don't have to go looking for the content. We have it set up here and then you can decide if you're going to publish what content you're going to utilize. And so here you can see if I click on the um, the student preview button, only a portion of the content is shown to the students. So the way that this is set up is that with the textbook correlations, we have a series of assignments. So the modules assignments, this takes students directly to anatomy and physiology. So this is the, you, this is familiar to you. Stacy showed you this content. So students are able to click into this content and it takes them directly to those resources so that it's a shortcut with the, modules the idea is is that it is a learning um, acquisition process and so you can edit and change all of this information and you can see here this jumps from chapter 11 to chapter 12 to chapter 16. so it helps keep students on track um, so that's the first assignment that modules component and then the next assignment is anatomy id and the idea with the anatomy id is that then you edit this structure to then put in the list of structures that students are required to find. So you populate this with your list of different structures that students need to go through and find that they've just read about in anatomy and physiology. This takes them to the view for, anat for this program, Atlas, which is where Stacy spent some time as well, so that then students are able to click in find the different structures and read through again more information where here we've got the textbook we've got that pathology information um, they can dissect content away to get to the lower views um, and then depending on the structure you choose you can dig into that details tab so here with this muscle i with an i'm in a muscle i get this pin icon if i'm in a bone i have bony landmarks so students can drill in farther here so that then they can see Here's the origin and the insertions when I select these little buttons right here. That takes them to, it shows them blood supply. It shows them innervation so that they're learning about these different structures and really digging in and exploring. And then this related content shows them those muscle actions. And so for students to be able to see and rotate and see what that muscle action is that's associated specifically with that muscle, they can select these structures here and they can fade them so that they can see that joint articulation. I think this is something Stacy showed earlier so that they really understand. I like, 
I think the shoulder is just a great way to illustrate that. When students are in this view and they select um, a bone, what the bone and they select a bone and deal into that details tab is then this takes them in and shows them those bony landmarks so that then they can explore again and see that how that component is but then this is a nice feature that we just recently added and again this is in human anatomy atlas in the anatomy id when i click on this muscle attachment i then have the ability that i can then add in those muscles and i think this is just phenomenal for students to really understand the complexity of the sphenoid and so that then it helps them understand how everything is is really stacked in there and so with the anatomy id assignment then students go through review kind of like a, a, a scavenger hunt or you know to really review and find that so we've got the guided walkthrough with anatomy and physiology with the modules and then a review and then um, they go on and they can take um, they can do some quizzing that is set up we also have here this muscle actions this takes them in directly into those muscle actions so depending on what is set up you have different resources. Now we put everything in here because we also have print lab activities that can be utilized that drive students, that this is another way that students can utilize our content. So this is designed to be using Human Anatomy Atlas. And so students are walk, walked through utilizing that material and it gives them step-by-step -step instructions so that they you know, click into view number 11 and review this content. So we've got all of these details that are set up for you. So this is another option, something that's included. You decide what you wanna use. Um, we also haven't talked about it, but with augmented reality, um, you have the ability to use Atlas and the mobile device. Students get mobile downloads as part of their purchase. Um, students can pair and actually do augmented reality to learn muscle actions. Um, again, lots of training and resources and support available through your individual rep, and so they can walk you through more in detail, but hopefully that will, um, that will help. Um, so, and then Ann Haber just asked, Stacy, you said that you assess using models. Do you find that students can switch from virtual, model, from virtual to models easily? Uh, you mean in like the physical lab space, like when we're, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, it's, it's most definitely, um, very easy for them to, like I said, you, you know, for the scapula, for instance, they hold that up in front of them and they can have it on their laptop and, you know, look at a particular component, compare, click, get confirmation of what that structure is. So I think, yes, it is. Um, I, I've seen it so many times. It, it, it is very much um, just a combination of the resources. Uh, so I definitely would never want to lose those physical models, the very few ones that we have. Um, like I said, but but Visible Body again is just a great resource for them to once they leave that laboratory setting, it's like they still have access to that model wherever they're at. So um, yeah, very easy for them to 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 switch in between. I, I see it happen all the time between either whether it's a student on a cell phone, a tablet, or a laptop. It, it's very very easy. Stacy, do you uh, uh, collaborate directly with graduate programs that you feed? Um, well, right now, I'm interested in um, getting this information to we have a, a, a do you currently do that? Oh, currently? No, not currently. I don't. Uh -huh. um, that'd be wonderful. Uh, always open for collaboration. Um, but what I am trying to do is we have a two year nursing program uh, on our campus. Uh, so um, I, I am kind of trying to get in communication with their dean, though. She's got her hands very much full right now with this transition to an online setting but um you know once we get back um that's definitely something that um that they're interested in using and I'm, I'm currently attending texas christian university and i believe that there might be some potential there um yeah. well they, if you want any uh collaboration with a program that's already in doing it then or if anybody listening to this uh please do uh be in touch with me yeah absolutely thank you that's thank so you. wonderful and is this graduate program in physical therapy? Is that what you said? It's a physical therapy, occupational therapy, uh, athletic training, and physician assistant. Okay, I can definitely. Our programs uh, are OT and PT, and the master's level is PA and um, AT. Okay, great. And this is June, right? Hank. What school are you at, June? University of Tennessee at Chattanooga. My email is june-hanks at utc.edu.
Okay, great. We will definitely follow up. And we do, we've got um, Duke uses Visible Body for their uh, DPT program. We work with Boston University's PT program and their gross anatomy course. So I, um, I can definitely connect you with some professors who teach in that, those areas. Okay. So I actually have to, uh, I have to go teach a microbiology class right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, uh, uh, thank you all so much. Um, I look forward to seeing you all uh, again, hopefully. Um, and, and I'll also go on ahead very quickly um, and type in my email in case anyone uh, ever wanted to uh, reach out to me. It's uh, svasquez at dtriplecd.edu. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all. It's, it's been wonderful again, Visible Body Rocks, uh, no joke. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, thank you all so much and y'all have a wonderful day. Thank, thank you so much, Stacy. All right, bye everyone. Bye. I can hang on for a few more minutes if um, there are any other questions. Um, we will we, we will put the recording on our YouTube channel um, so I'll just let your so I guess where's the best place to find it we will definitely get back to you I don't have the exact answer but it'll we have a webinar channel on YouTube where we, where we will post this recording and again like Mary said we're hosting another one on Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time feel free to join that and then we will continue this format of you know, having visible body professors who are using the platform, you know, be available to answer questions and show you what they're doing. So we'll, we'll stay tuned. We have more and we, we are definitely planning one about um, how to use it to either supplement or replace the cadaver lab because we know that's a huge need right now. So stay tuned. <laughs> uh, let's see. Any other questions, Mary, do you see? Let's see. Uh, James Langford looks like he just a second ago said that he had a question. So if you want to unmute. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead, James. There you go. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Um, I've been using Visual Body quite a while. I teach at a uh, Chinese medical school in uh, Los Angeles, uh, acupuncture school, and I do all their anatomy courses plus. Um, uh, Western physical assessment and um, I had trouble with my computer what happened is that we had to take a bunch of viruses off and it wiped out my my uh, visual body and muscle premium um, are they gone forever or, or is there some way I can retreat those uh, or do I have to buy a new one whatever it's necessary it's fine with me but what if you have some input on that yeah, so I think the best thing to do um, is to get you a courseware account because those are the most up-to-date apps um but you know if you can email me i can send your name into our support team okay but, um courseware is really the best option because you'll constantly get the updated web apps and that's the platform you can definitely lecture with and use in class Great. Um, so we can set you up with one of those accounts and then if you can just email me we'll figure out something for those downloads all right i'll do that thank you you're welcome any other questions or comments. Mary, do you see any more? I, I'm going to look at the Q&A real quick. Um, I think yeah, we're good. I, yep, and I just posted the webinar link on the, the chat as well. So thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope this was really helpful. Um, it's great to have these faculty partners who are so enthusiastic. Um, I did not pay Stacy to, to say all those wonderful things. <laughs> <laughs> that I might so <laughs> so thanks you guys I hope you guys have a great afternoon and be sure to reach out to your rep to schedule additional training or get more questions answered yes absolutely thank you everybody have a good afternoon bye-bye <laughs>